Okay, in this lesson, we are going to learn about how to identify compression and reflections in a displacement time graph. I have a question from my subscriber. He wanted to know that whether you can identify a compression or reflection at a particular time if you are given the displacement time graph of a longitudinal wave instead. I think this is a great question because it's me thinking because um, no students in my 10 years of teaching have ever asked this question before. I think I know the answer, but I'm not entirely sure about it. So this video is created to find out if I'm correct. Okay, first thing first. In our le other lessons, we are actually able to determine where the compressions and reflection in a displacement distance graph for the entire wave. So it's like a displacement distance graph is sort of like a freeze frame of, um, of a wave. So you know that this part is a compression. And over here, where it's sparsely, is a reflection and compression and reflection and so on. Okay, but you find that in this lesson, we are going to determine when are the compression and reflection in a displacement time graph at a particular point in the wave. So actually, we need to identify uh, the point that we're interested in. Okay, so. We want to find out when is it a compression and when is is a reflection. So now it's a compression for this particular and now it's a reflection and a compression and roughly a reflection. In our previous lesson, one of the key points in identifying compression and reflection is in a displacement distance graph is that both compression and reflections are at a point where where displacement is zero. So in a displacement distance graph, you find that the compressions are at zeros. The reflection is also at displacement is zero. If you're unsure about this, uh, do refer to my previous lesson. So this learning point is useful because it also means that when a particular point is at either a compression or reflection, its displacement must also logically be at zero. There are only two points in the wave cycle where the displacement of a particular uh, of a particle is at zero, is when displacement changes from negative to positive, and when displacement changes from positive to negative. So graphically, in the displacement time graph, it means that it will only be displacement at zero when it is changing from maybe a positive displacement to a negative displacement. So it must pass through zero. So similarly, these are the points that will pass through uh, displacement event zero. But there's also another point which is changing from negative displacement to positive displacement. So it will pass through zero to a negative displacement to a positive displacement, a negative displacement to a positive displacement. Okay, so this is also the two types situation where the displacement is zero. So one is should be a compression and one should be a reflection. But how to identify? Okay, this time round, instead of using theory, I'm just going to use a motion analysis tool called video tracker to help us uh, find the answer. So I'm just going to use this video. Though it's a simulation, its result should be close enough to make a general conclusion or which one is when is, is it compression or when is it reflection? Okay, this is the software that I'm talking about. So what I'm going to do is that I'm interested in this particular particle that's on top over here. And I'm going to analyze as it moves through, as the compression and the reflection move through, we'll see how what, what is the uh, displacement. Okay, so, so you find that as it moves through, we try to track it going back and forth, back and forth, okay, and of, and we know that when it's a reflection, okay, roughly it is displacement zero. So you see that the axis, um, it, uh, the displacement is zero over here, and when it's compression, the displacement is also zero, okay. Let's have a closer look. Okay, 
this is our starting point. Okay, why is this a starting point? Because we know that when the compression hits the particle, it should be at displacement equal to zero. So this is what we try try to find out. Okay, what we need to do is to track what happens as it moves back and forth. Okay, what is the displacement time graph? Okay, I already done this in advance. So this is actually what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. You see, this is um, the point that it is at, and let's observe what happens. Here, okay, as the compression moves past and become a reflection, the dot is being tracked, and you find that it looks like a sine wave, like displacement time graph. Okay, so this is just a demonstration, but what we can clearly see now is that if we move to a compression, when the dot is at a compression, you realize that the displacement is very close to zero, and is before that is actually at a negative displacement, and it changes to a positive displacement. Okay, as you can also clearly see it from the diagram. And the opposite also holds true. Okay, let's take a look at the reflection. When it's reflection, you find that again it is supposed to be displacement is roughly about zero. So this is roughly about zero. Okay, so before that you find that uh, before a reflection. Okay, before a reflection, the displacement is actually negative. Oh, sorry, the displacement is actually at the positive side. And then as you approach a reflection, here. It becomes zero, and when the reflection pass, the displacement is actually at the negative side. Okay, so if you see it clearly, for compression, it goes from negative to positive, and when it's at reflection, it goes from negative positive to negative. Okay, so using a simulation right now, we can conclude that for compression, it is actually going from these are the compressions. It is actually going from negative displacement to positive displacement. Okay, negative displacement to positive, so it's going towards right. So think in terms of the compression, it's actually pushing the particle forward when compression hits the particle. But for reflection, it is the opposite. It is going from positive, moving towards left, towards the negative. So these are the reflections. This is the software that I use. That's all for today. Please subscribe and support my channel. For my other physics video lesson arranged according to topics, please visit my blog at boringphysicsteachers.wordpress.com. You can subscribe to my channel to be informed when I upload new physics video lessons. Thank you.